Welcome to St. Thomas Anglican Church in Weston. I'm Joanne and this is Cassandra. We're so glad you could join us for this continuation of the Christmas season. Uh, just a few announcements. So if you would like to follow along in our service, there is a link either above or below uh, that will take you to the order of service um, where you're invited to join along in the bold text. Uh, our dinner service is still going strong uh, every Wednesday evening. And while some families no longer need our services, we are uh, having new families join every week. So we are still preparing about 200 meals uh, every Wednesday and 75 crafts for kids, teens, and even adults if they would like. If you're noticing a need for winter wear, uh, especially adult jackets, hats, and specifically mitts and gloves. So if you have any to spare, I'm sure we can find them a home. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about uh, us, uh, would like to access our services, or would like to support the, work, the good work that's happening here, please check out our website or social media at St. Thomas Weston um, or Creative Kids with a K. Uh, links will be posted with this video. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3, 15 and 16. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Christ, incarnate word. You were before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of righteousness, you shine with the love of God and illuminate the whole universe. Blessed are you, child of Mary, born in a manger, you shared our humanity. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate your coming, O Emmanuel. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the creatures on earth, we sing and dance at your birth. O shoot of Jesse, let heaven and earth shout their praise. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We'll move on now to Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heaven, from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, the few sea monsters and all deeps. 
fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of heaven and earth. You open our eyes to see the wonders around us and our hearts and mouths to praise you. Now give us strength for your loving servants through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the 10th verse, to chapter 62, ending in the 3rd verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We carry on with the response reading. The word of life which was from the be the word of life which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. The word of life which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes, and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you, for our fellowship is with God and with God's beloved, Jesus the Christ. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. A reading from Galatians 4, 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer the slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There shall come forth a shoot from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he has seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parent brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his hand, hands and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dispensing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thought of many will be revealed, and his son will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they have finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they return to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. During the week, I found myself dressing up a lovely turkey for our family Christmas dinner. I was so engaged and wrapped up with putting all the necessary ingredients in it so that my family could have a very delicious meal on Christmas Day. This took me several hours in between other things to allow the condiment to properly permeate through it and had a uh, flavor uh, to taste. I also added some stuffing mix to make it a great meal. The end result was impeccable. 
after pulling the turkey from the oven, it looks so brownished and well cooked. Now, I want you to imagine your turkey being pulled out of your oven, well cooked, which makes you feel hungry. You have taken time and energy to prepare this meal. So I'm just asking you to imagine what it will look like after being well cooked, which makes you feel hungry. And to me, for the first in a very long time, I ended up with a very delicious turkey that I could ever think of. It was so delicious <laughs> to the extent that my family could not resist the temptation of the aroma and the taste. We all had a fantastic Christmas dinner, well decorated, with steamed rice and, and vegetable. And I have promised my family another great meal for the new year. And hopefully, the turkey that I will be dressing up will be as great and meet expectations. Now, this is my point. While I was engaged dressing up this lovely turkey, some thoughts came to my mind about time spent preparing and dressing and waiting for all the condiments to permeate through the turkey to have excellent results. I pictured Christmas Day with thoughts of joy and laughter the day we bring in my family and family or other friends, having anticipated for some time during Advent season. I thought of what Christmas Day would look like in the midst of this pandemic. And I also thought of how beautiful our life would be being decorated with the gift of life Jesus brings us during this season. Throughout Advent in our parish, we have all savored the different words and thoughts every Sunday during our weekly deeper dive at St. Thomas on our hope and expectation of the coming of Jesus at Christmas and the reason why we do what we are doing. I hope that we have taken in from the scriptures all the world words that we have taken in will help us to get us through the days month and even years ahead advent after after all is not just a time to prepare for christmas but a time to have that feel of jesus being present with us and for us to reorientate our whole lives where we may be having many anxious moments and fears and we have been witnessing so many uncertainties since the beginning of pandemic this year but the good news is there is hope for us that hope is the salvation Jesus brings to us as gift Jesus is the Messiah and messenger of hope who has come to allay all fears, questions, and doubts and anxieties we might have. I want us to remember that lockdown is not lock up. Christ's light has come to dissipate darkness in our world. And now, 
Last Sunday, our preacher points our attention to the good news angel Gabriel brought to Mary, saying, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and, womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary's response to Angel Gabriel was positive. Here I am I, the servant of the Lord. In the same understanding, as we have read in our gospel this morning, we see a response to this good news received and declared in words spoken through Simeon and Anna the prophet when baby Jesus was brought to the temple in Jerusalem. From their own voices of prayer and praises, we heard God's hope for Israel. In our own struggles too, in this dispensation, this same message re-echoes that the same voices we have heard in the gospel this morning. This is for us to respond to God's call of salvation because we are also bearers of this good news Jesus brings to us. We receive our redemption revealed through Jesus Christ to the manifestation of His glory in all people and nations. This is the good news Christ brings to the world to save us all from darkness and sin. Having waited during the Advent season, our response now is to receive the gift of salvation Jesus brings to us. It is time for us to live in that light and respond to his invitation calling us out of the shadow of darkness and doubt. And are we ready for this? Mary was ready for this. Simeon, Anna were expecting this. In other words, they were ready for this. And they received it and they declared it in their prayers and their praises to God. We remember our fond memories of lighting of candles during Advent and hearing reflections on love and joy, peace and hope. What do all this mean to us as we celebrate this season? Even though we cannot be present in the community with one another at this time the way we should be, let us imagine that imagery we have seen in the past during our worships, which reflects the imagery of the dawning light that resonates that sense of inexplicable joy in us. In the epistle this morning, Paul reminds the Galatians that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the time. This is the moment to embrace the good news Jesus brings to us this season. The waiting season is over. What we have been waiting for has now been revealed to us in the gift of Jesus that we received during this season. 
that same Jesus is the good news in the Gabriel brought to Mary. And now it is time for us too as church and God's people to receive and embrace the same good news. To make sense of this from what we have heard last Sunday of Advent, the coming of Jesus is the beginning of a new life for us and the end of darkness to all that make us fear and doubt and which creates anxieties in us. Again, in the episode this morning, the echo of the love and sin rang the bell. But we find our redemption in Christ Jesus as adopted God's children because Jesus has been revealed to us. And now, it is time for us to see the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as the time of our redemption. And as we celebrate and share in giving during this season of Christmas, we need to also remind ourselves that our God is not far, is not remote, is not distant from us. God in Jesus Christ was born into our world to be in solidarity with us, to show us his perfect love. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. The implication of this for us is to once again reflect on our redemption brought through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world who has once again come to cast away every shadow of darkness and doubt and fear in our lives. In our earnest expectation of the new year, even though we do not know how this expectation will unfold, we know for sure that God's promise for us during this season is a gift of life and redemption found in Christ Jesus. Let us hold on to that. That will take us through. That will take us through the days and months and years to come. That is our hope. That is our joy. That is our consolation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have found upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you, Wilton, for the gospel reading and your reflection. We'll carry on with the affirmation of faith. Let us confirm, let, let us affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll carry on in prayer with the prayers for, for the community. Let us pray to the creator of the universe. Holy One, by the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, grant us peace. 
by the mystery of the word made flesh. Hear us and grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God. Hear us and grant us peace. By the manifestation of your beloved to the shepherds. Hear us and grant us peace. By the obedience of the maker of the world and Mary, to Mary and Joseph. Hear us and grant us peace. We pray for the whole church that we may especially hold dear those fellow Christians that suffer per persecution. Hear us and grant us peace. We pray for those who are sick or suffering as we continue to see the, the effects of the pandemic. Hear us and grant us peace. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate word. May this light enkindled in our hearts shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our, sa as our Savior taught us, we invite you to pray in the language your heart loves best. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness, into the marvelous light of Christ, Bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Amen.